welcome back. You'll recognize our next guest from CTV News, and now he's opening up about his steps toward becoming a father. For years, Todd Vander Hayden and his partner Michael have been on a fertility journey to start their own family through surrogacy. We'd like to welcome him to the show today to talk about it. Welcome, Todd. Hello. Hi. It's great to see both of you. Too. I've worked with both of you in the past. Yes. And look at this audience. Look at this yeah. audience. Crazy. I know. Yeah. Let's walk through your journey. Um, you know, what the steps you've taken, how long your partner have been in this so, so far. So I've always wanted to be a father since the very beginning. My mom always joked about how out of all the kids, I would be the one with a kid. My sisters <laughs> had kids and I never did. It's a little more challenging as a gay man. You can imagine why, right? And so my partner and I really started this about five years ago. We got serious. We had to figure out what to do, where to go, who to talk to, how much would it cost. And uh, it's been a real adventure. It's been a real journey. It's been a lot of fun. Fun. There have been setbacks. And I want to say that all the women we've worked with who have been surrogates have been so amazing. As you both know, I'm a big fan of superheroes and comic books. And these are real life superheroes. These women Aww. have been so magical. Like, yeah, amazing. 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 Yeah. Yes, long time. Five years is a long time. Yes. It sounds like there are a lot of complexities. Yep. So let's start with what are the kinds of clinics that are required in this journey for you? Right, so we're very fortunate to live in a country where this is even legal because remember, most countries, you can't do this, right? In Canada, uh, they make it, uh, to a certain extent, a little bit easier because there are all sorts of different agencies out there that you can approach and talk to. So first of all, you need an egg donor agency that will match you with an egg donor, and that becomes the biological mother. Then you need an agency that will match you with a surrogate who will carry the baby to term. You also need a fertility clinic that will create the embryos that get transferred into a surrogate, and you need lawyers that are involved as well. So there's a lot of different people in the process. Yeah. Uh, and of course, with the egg donor and the surrogate, they have to be two separate women in Canada. They can't be the same person okay. by oh, law. That question, yes. I didn't know that. Really? Yes. Uh, and you know, you develop this wonderful, strange, amazing relationship with a woman, two women, that you're going to have in your life really forever for as long wow. as the child, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so, so you, you're hinting at this, like, so the, since families are left to, uh, on their own to mm -hmm. find the egg donors, yeah. so how does this matching process with the surrogates work exactly? Good question. It's kind of like a dating thing, you know, where you go <laughs> onto the database and you're actually looking at profiles of egg donors uh, and of surrogates, and they may live in your home province, they may live in BC or Nova Scotia, uh, different ages, uh, different backgrounds, and then you try to figure out, oh, I kind of like this one, I have a good vibe about that one, and then the matching process process begins where you get an opportunity to talk to them, communicate with them, and see if it vibes for both of you. And if you have a match, then you move forward to the next step. Okay, so you've had multiple surrogates come we through in, in your life and yes. this journey so far. Is that Typical? It is not typical. We've had not a lot of luck in some ways. Uh, we've had some setbacks. We've met some great people, and it's been a lot of fun and a great adventure. But we worked with one surrogate, and unfortunately, biology being what it is, you both know this, it just didn't work the first time. Mm. So we tried again and again, and then we had to work with another surrogate. And at the last minute, you know, life comes up, right? And people have changes, and she, at the end, decided because of family stuff, she didn't want to move forward. So then we have a third surrogate now, and we're working with her. So it's, you know, it's but this is not normal. Most of the time it's like maybe one or two, so yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so you worked with Fertility Friends Foundation yes. and they have education and mm -hmm. resources for family. Um, but let's talk about the financial aspect. What are the costs associated mm. with surrogacy? Okay, so $100,000. Wow. Uh, yep. That's, that's um, the amalgamated cost yes. right now? Yes, okay. yes. And that's, Cynthia, if it all goes well. Okay. okay? Oh. If it doesn't go well, then it starts to go higher and higher and higher. I was fortunate, you know, my parents helped out. I had savings. I have a great job. So, you know, we were able to do this, uh, but it can be super expensive. And the Fertility Friends Foundation, Foundation asked me to be part of their group a couple months ago to sort of act as an ambassador because they're a great charity that actually raises money for families, couples who want to do this and don't have the financial wherewithal. Oh, wow. So they approached me and said, look, would you be willing to uh, come out, so to speak, and talk about this? Because a lot of people don't want to talk about it. It's very personal. Mm. Um, and, you know, I... What I also have to say thank you to CTV News because they were so encouraging of this. Everyone at CTV has been really, really supportive. And, you know, to be part of this foundation, come on shows like this, talk about it. And I think really to kind of like normalize the idea of same-sex couples having kids, mm -hmm. just like everybody else, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Talking about money. 
yes. which is like, I'll blow your mind them out. Yep. But let's talk about the legal rights of yep. all the parties. I don't know if yep. anybody else in this room is thinking it, but what are the legal rights of the different people involved? Yeah, so I feel like I could write a book about this after yeah. everything we've been through. Uh, because, you know, you think one thing and the reality is different. You have to have lawyers. You have to have legal agreements with both the egg donor and the surrogate, okay, to make sure that everybody is on the same page. The concern, obviously, is that once the baby is born, they don't want there to be any uh, issues with legal rights, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have a legal agreement with the egg donor who agrees to give up parental rights, and you also have a legal agreement separately with the surrogate to do the same thing, just to make sure. Now, would that hold up in court in Canada if it was ever challenged? I'm not sure. Uh, but to this day, there's never been that kind of thing. So, you know, the legal agreements are there, but they're not always necessarily, you know, foolproof, mm. but they do, they have worked up till now, yeah. So you mentioned that currently there is a third surrogate yes. that you did uh, a transfer with yes. uh, several months ago, I yes. believe. Do yes. you have any updates? So we so that one didn't work. Okay. But we have another. Yeah, I know. But we have another one coming up in three weeks. Another transfer with the same surrogate. And so we're really hopeful that this time will be the time that it actually works. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. So for. For anyone out there watching or thinking about embarking on their own surrogacy journey, what's what's a tip that you would give to them? I would say keep the faith, do your homework, be realistic about how long is it going to take, how much it's going to cost, right? Because you don't always get the full picture when you're, you talk to these agencies. And just realize, you know, that as you both know, having a kid is priceless. Uh, and so sometimes it takes longer to get there, right? And you got to be zen about it and just kind of realize, look, you know, it'll happen when it happens. And you have to kind of give in to the universe and accept the fact that you don't have a lot of power. And that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay because, you know, life is a journey and eventually we'll all get there. Well, Todd, we can't wait to check in with you eventually, you know, in this little while. It's great to see both of you again. Thank, you. thank yeah. you so thank much you. for sharing you. your story yeah. with thank us. You. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey there. What did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.